Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and you'll note how well the museum organises things with the weather. My name's Peter Out. I'm the Assistant Director of Operations at the National Maritime Museum. More importantly, my name is, or my family name is on panel 40. It's slightly shinier than the rest because every day I thank my father for his decision. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the first Australians, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, as the traditional custodians of the land and waters upon which we are gathering. We also acknowledge all traditional custodians of the lands and waters throughout Australia and pay our respects to them and their cultures and to their elders past and present. It is my pleasure to welcome you all to the National Maritime Museum today for the Welcome Wall Unveiling Ceremony. A very big welcome to our special guests this morning. We have Mark Kerr, the MP for and member for Oatley, Parliamentary Secretary for Transport and Infrastructure, who is today representing Gladys Berejiklian, the Premier of New South Wales. We have the CEO of Multicultural New South Wales, Hakan Hubman. And we also would like to give a warm welcome to today's registrant speakers. We have Michael Ronne and Patika Desai and George Hussis. I'd also like to welcome good friends to the museum, Dr. Stavros Kyrimis, the Consul General of Greece, and also Sonia Gandhi, and for her support to the National Maritime Museum. We have ceremonies like this each year to unveil new names on the welcome wall and it's great to see uh, such a wonderfully diverse group to join us to celebrate the contribution that migrants make and continue to make to Australia. Now in its 18th year the welcome wall continues to grow. Today we will unveil a further 364 new names, names that you have all added. This brings the total number of names on our wall to over 28,000 and it will continue. As you may note, we have more space and we have plans to continue to grow the wall. At the Australian National Maritime Museum, we continue to consider migration to be one of our major themes in Australia's maritime heritage history and one of our special interest areas. As such, we have a permanent exhibition on display dedicated to the subject and you will find this inside the museum under the heading of passengers. Each year in January on our museum rooftop, we have our Waves of Migration light show, which tells the story of those who have come across the sea to make Australia their home. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you our first special guest speaker for today, Mark Kerr MP, member for Oatley, representing Gladys Berejiklian. Please welcome Mark Kerr. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is a great honour to be here this morning representing the Premier of New South Wales, the Honourable Gladys Berejiklian. And it's a great privilege to do so today at this unveiling of over 364 new names on the welcoming wall. This wall is an important national monument honouring everyday Australians, some of who have taken incredible journeys and all of whom have contributed to our tolerant and diverse Australian society. The 364 names are a monument to the 364 people, but they stand as part of a broader testimony to those values of tolerance and diversity. The arrival of the first fleet in 1788 signalled the arrival of the first migrants. And ever since that time, and especially as the means of transport and the nature of migration has changed, multiculturalism has been a component to our society. Our great state, our great city today, our great nation has been built on multicult from multiculturalism. The ethnic origins of many of the names on the walls speak to our diversity. In fact, uh, my own story and my family's own story of migration my dad's side of the family came from Malta and Egypt. My mum's side came from Ireland, opposite ends of the globe around the world, but came to settle in the same suburb. In fact, they settled in the same street 
Australian Avenue Matrable. It's how my parents met, in fact. But my grandparents and their story of struggle, no different to many of you here today, worked two or three jobs, many shifts, to put food on the table and a roof over their head. But their story, like yours, are just the wonderful story of multiculturalism. Many of them worked on the Harbour Bridge that's behind us today, the Opera House. Many of them worked on Darling Harbour, or in fact on the Snowy River Scheme. But many of them have a same similar story. They worked damn hard to make this great country what it is today. The 364 people and the 28,657 names from all over the world, 200 countries that appear along the entire length of the wall, came to Australia for a better life. I want to acknowledge the families here today of the 364 people and their families who have not only taken the steps to have their names displayed here, but those lives and contributions bear witnesses, witness to all that is great and special about our great nation, Australia. I want to acknowledge the great work and the staff of the Australian National Maritime Museum and the important job that they've done over the years in sharing the story of Australia's migration and the success of multiculturalism. On behalf of the New South Wales Government and on behalf of the Premier of New South Wales, Gladys Berejiklian, I want to say thank you to all those involved today. Thank you. And say thank you, Mark, and for making that time come today. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is uh, the CEO of Multicultural New South Wales, Hakan Harman. Multicultural New South Wales helps to build and maintain a cohesive and harmonious multicultural society that enriches the lives of all people of New South Wales. We are delighted to have him here today. So again, please make him welcome. Hakan Harman. Thanks very much, Peter. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Can I um, also just begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and pay my respects to the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation uh, and to the elders past and present and those that are from an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander background with us this morning. I'd also like to acknowledge the multicultural mix of people that make up this wonderful city, state and this beautiful nation of ours and uh, much like Alicia said, uh, it certainly feels like I'm home. I was asked this morning to talk about my own experience. Uh, I was born on the 27th of May, almost five decades ago, in Istanbul. And uh, back then, as folks here in Australia, many of us with our ancestries now who would not be here back then in 1967, were taking a magnificent step to vote on a referendum change, uh, to include the Indigenous vote uh, as a part of the Constitution. And it was an overwhelming yes. And it was an overwhelming yes by predominantly British Australians who included the multicultural principles, who accepted that Australia needed to embrace the rest of the world. And I'm one of the products of those wonderful decisions. And I'm so proud to say that I'm Australian. And I'm so proud to say that I'm Australian and I'm very proud of my Turkish heritage. Um, and I think to live in a state uh, where we have people from 245 different ancestries, I tried to sum up the privilege that Australia has given me is just amazing. I think when I was, I was 10 years old in 1977, when my father, my mum and my elder brother and I migrated to Australia and, and into Sydney, uh, did not know a single word of English. And I don't make this as an excuse. I was, uh, you know, sort of in the top of my classes in, in, in Istanbul. When I came here, I was in a, in a sort of like the lower classes. I couldn't speak English and I didn't really do too well in my HSC. But I worked hard. I went to TAFE, I then went to university and um, and opportunities open themselves. And this state and this wonderful nation has given me 
such magnificent opportunities um, and I'm very very grateful to be in a position where we work with and my wife calls it the mini United Nations um, to, to work in, in a land where we don't always agree on everything and everyone has a different perspective and it's ever more so important now in this day and age globally the things we hear from day to day and I always say it is so much more important for Australia in this time in the world for us to stick together, to band together, to hold hands and to embrace each other and to put aside the differences that may arise. Um, so getting back to my own story, um, I love football. Um, I would never have thought, as I said, that I would be here in this magnificent location uh, to be a part of this ceremony. And um, I'd like to thank also the Australian National Maritime Museum, their wonderful partners and supporters of Multicultural New South Wales, and for inviting me uh, to be a part of this, um, this ceremony this morning. And to the 364 people and the families that their names uh, go on that wall today, congratulations and uh, thank you for making Australia home that it is, that I love, and I uh, wish you a wonderful day. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hakan. Ladies and gentlemen, the Welcome Wall represents the social history of our migrant experience as told by you. As we all know, Australia is truly a multicultural country and the Welcome Wall is a celebration of this amazing diversity. Uh, indeed, my own family has great diversity. My father was a 10 pound pom from Liverpool. My wife's grandfather was from the Indian Punjab. One daughter is from Macedonia. The other daughter is from Poland. I'm waiting with great interest what my daughter is going to marry for. <laughs> it is truly a delightful country to live in. For the museum, it's a very personal story behind each name listed on the wall that are so fascinating. They tell us of the people who have voyaged across the seas to start new lives in this country bringing with them the various cultures of their homelands and their own personal experiences. This trove of memories and anecdotes from everyday people is freely available on the Welcome Wall website. So sitting behind the Welcome Wall, we have a database on, which actually has the stories that are related to each of the names that appear on the Welcome Wall. The names span more than two centuries and represent a kind of informal folk history of Australia's migration from convicts in the 18th century right through to today. It is now my pleasure to introduce you three such people who, like you, have registered their names and have added their stories to the Welcome Wall database. Our first speaker is Michael Ronne. Michael joined us today to honour his parents, Margit and Otto, who migrated to Australia in 1938 as Jewish refugees. Welcome, Michael, please. Uh, good morning. I'd like to thank the Australian National Maritime Museum for uh, giving me the opportunity to tell you a little bit about my family and organising such a perfect day for this uh, ceremony. Uh, well, my parents, uh, Otto, Ronai and Margaret Kovacs, arrived in 1938. Uh, it was a pure coincidence that they arrived three days apart, my mother from Germany and my father from Austria. Uh, they came with their parents, so all four of my grandparents, and my parents and their siblings came uh, to Australia and they were lucky they got here to escape the Nazis. Uh, it, back in the 30s, the Australian government was actually a bit hesitant to, be, to permit all the many Jews who wanted to get away from the Nazis and get to anywhere they possibly could in the world. Uh, and in fact, in 1938, Australia did allocate a, a program of 15,000 places for Jews to get here. Uh, and, and luckily, unfortunately, only 7,000 actually made it to Australia before the war started. And my parents were amongst the lucky ones. Uh, this was Australia's first ever refugee program uh, that was set up, uh, which of course, in more recent decades, we've had an extensive uh, program for this. My father arrived with his twin brother and their parents. They spoke very little English. Uh, his parents were in their 60s 
and that, that meant that uh, they didn't uh, have the opportunity to, to get to work. They, they just uh, became Australian pensioners. Uh, my father and his brother, shortly after they arrived, they joined the Australian Army uh, to give something back to Australia. Uh, because they were still classed as aliens, they weren't uh, allowed to serve overseas, so they ended up serving in Australia to support the Australian military forces. Uh, my mother, on the other hand, was very young. She was only 15 and arrived with her younger sister and their parents. And they, my grandparents on that side, shortly after they arrived, set up a, 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 a small family business to manufacture uh, sorry, uh, some uh, clothing and, and to survive because they had nothing when they arrived in Australia. The important thing though was that all of my parents and grandparents were safe here a long way from the war. The Jewish community supported the new arrivals and had a lot of community and social events and in 1944 my parents met here in Sydney at, at a community dance and they married later in 1944. My brother was born in 45 and then I was born in 47. After, the, after that, my father actually joined uh, my, his wife's parents' business uh, and uh, after a few years took it over and turned it into the largest necktie manufacturer in Australia. And my mother kept working there part-time to help the business and when I was quite young, I used to earn a bit of pocket money helping out in the factory. I'm re really pleased my, my wife, my two daughters, my brother and his wife are all here today to help us celebrate this event. Our descend the descendants of my parents and grandparents are the lucky ones. We've all grown up in Australia and have had what we all know is a fantastic life in this country. To finish off, I want to mention how my fa family's refugee situation has t did turn full circle many years later. It was 40 years after they arrived, I ended up working in the Department of Immigration and Ethnic Affairs, and I was posted to South America during a very dark period in their history. There were several fascist military dictators in, in four of, at least four of the countries there. And when I was going to South America, the Australian government instructed me to establish Australia's refugee program for Latin America. So given my family history, I was very pleased and got a huge amount of personal satisfaction of being able to actually uh, get back and set, <laughs> set up a refugee program myself. So thank you for listening to this very brief story about my family's successful immigration and life in Australia. Thank you, Michael, and we're most impressed with you organising the siren at the end of your speech. That was very impressive. <laughs> Our next guest speaker is Patika Desai, and Patika joins us today to talk about her family who migrated from India. Patika was recently named the India Australia Business Community Awards Young Community Achiever of the Year for her work on youth mental health project. Please welcome Patika. Wendy. Good morning ladies, gentlemen and special guests. Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we stand, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to elders past and present. I'd also like to acknowledge the vast cultures, languages and experiences represented here today. In 1990, two fresh-faced Indian migrants landed in Melbourne, Australia with their four-year-old daughter and $480 in their pocket to pursue new opportunities within the hospitality industry and a better lifestyle for their family. A year later, I was born, a first-generation citizen of Australia of Indian origin. This has become one of my many identities, part of a complex system of identities that we share as culturally ethnically, spiritually and linguistically diverse people living in one of the most multicultural places on earth. Australia for our family became a place of endless opportunities and at times significant challenges. Despite initial expectations to enter the hospitality workforce, 
My mother spent her first 18 months boxing shoes in a shoe factory. We learned though to adapt to a country ever growing and ever changing with its people. This included traveling to pursue exciting new adventures in Victoria, New South Wales, and finally in the Northern Territory where we settled. This country has become our home, a place of freedom to do and to be. A place where my mother went from the packaging line of a factory to an award-winning restaurant owner to a public servant in federal government. Where my father went from an executive chef to a lecturer to head of school at a top university. Where my sister went from a lawyer to a policy and research manager of one of the largest companies in South Asia to an artist. And where I, at 26 years old, have gone from a zoologist to a community development worker working across the country, to the founder of a well-recognized and respected youth mental health movement, to anything I could ever wish to be. And so as our time in Australia grew, so did our identity, who we are and who we have the potential to be. However, these layering identities came with much difficulty for me. When asked where I was from or to describe who I am, I was never quite sure how to proceed with an answer. What do I say? Which do I choose? But with age, I came to appreciate this dilemma. I am Australian. You are Australian. And what it means to be Australian is to be you, with your many identities and many stories. To be Australian is more than merely living on the soil. It is a representation of our shared history, whether you landed here by boat or by air, or have had your ancestry rooted here for thousands of years. It is us. It is all of us, and it has the potential to be anyone. I am honoured to have my name engraved among 29,000 of my fellow Australians, our shared experiences, identities, and love for this country entwined by recognition on these bronze panels. Thank you to the Australian Maritime Museum for another opportunity to speak today and to be part of the unveiling, and to the India Australia Business and Community Awards, which I have the pleasure of representing as the 2016 Young Community Achiever of the Year for the opportunity to have my name engraved on these walls. Thank you. Thank you, Pratika, for those most inspiring words. Our next speaker is George Hussis, who will be honouring his parents and grandparents who migrated to Australia from Greece. Welcome, George. I'd like to begin by thanking the Australian National Maritime Museum and congratulating them on the Welcome War. It is very important recognition of immigration to this country and a symbolic monument which allows generations to connect to their migrant past. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the Greek Consul General, Dr. Girimis, for his work in hosting the previous ceremony dedicated to the Greek community. Today, the Australian National Maritime Museum kindly unveils my father, Mr. Arthur George Hussos, who migrated here in 1964. My grandfather, Mr. Panayoti de la Cuvillas, who migrated here in 1951, and my grandmother, Mrs. Martina de la Cuvillas, who migrated in 1952. In many ways, their story is not too dissimilar from the thousands that came before and after them. My father was following the footsteps of his two brothers, Stephen and Leo, who came here looking for opportunity to work hard and build a new life. They had heard of this faraway place that offered so much and he courageously made the six week journey to come to Sydney on the Baptist in his best white suit. My grandfather Panayoti was a shepherd in Greece. He had finished serving in the Greek Navy and had married the woman of his dreams, Matina, and was to do, determined to do whatever was necessary to work hard and provide for the family which he adored. Both my father and grandparents relied heavily on the Greek community that came before them. And I'd also like to pay tribute to all the ethnic communities which helped migrants establish a sense of belonging in their new adoptive country. I have no doubt that if you're to combine the economic contribution made to this country from all the migrants on the Welcome War and their descendants, it would far outweigh any cost this country has bared to facilitate their migration and settlement. For instance, my family established a proud small business tradition with my father owning a successful restaurant for many decades and my grandparents a successful fish shop. In addition, my father, who never finished his schooling, 
was able to be the first of his generation to see both of his kids attend university. But too often in the modern political debate on immigration, we do not recognise these successes. Today, none of my family would qualify as acceptable migrants. They had no skills or qualifications, only dreams, hope and determination. We neglect to appreciate the true worth of human beings and value of character, courage, entrepreneurialism, eth ethics and determination. Values which have shaped Australia's prosperity and reputation both domestically and globally. These values should always be accepted into Australia without restriction. More recently, we're seeing the media and politicians of all persuasions vilify, marginalise, belittle and underappreciate the value of immigration to Australia. Too many are still in denial of the reality that modern Australia and all of its achievements are founded on migration. Australia should never be an elitist club where only the select few are allowed to come in based on criteria set by a group of people who have never had the same benchmark on themselves. Australia should always be a beacon for people around the world who want to see their hopes and dreams come true. Our migration tradition has helped forge strong links and bonds with the nations that people immigrated from. It has given Australia a reputation as prosperous and generous in the eyes of the international community. And I know this from my own experience when I travelled to Greece. My family and friends idolised the opportunity that Australia provided their relatives who migrated here. From the stories and achievements they hear, they appreciate how Australia was able to transform their fellow Greeks' hard work and enterprise into wealth, prosperity, peace and happiness. Often I feel a sense of regret from those who decided to remain in Greece. There is a special word in Greek called philoxenia, which doesn't have a perfect translation, but it roughly means to be a generous and hospitable host. I know all Greeks in Greece hold a deep sense of gratitude and appreciation to Australia for their philoxenia. While I'm profoundly proud of my Greek heritage, I will always thank the courage and foresight that my father and grandparents showed in making the journey to Australia. It allowed me to grow up in the greatest country on earth. And now, as I have my own family, and might raise my own kids, I hope to pass on the qualities displayed by my family that migrated here over 50 years ago. To this day, my grandfather Panayoti is my idol and inspiration on how a human being should be. Loving, caring, conscientious, hardworking and appreciating all that nature has to offer. His wisdom, good humour and jovial spirit was intoxicating to so many. My grandmother Martina, I've learned the importance of sacrifice and devotion to one's family. And from my father, I've adopted his work ethic, the artfulness of a sharp sense of humour and his strong philosophical convictions. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe this welcome wall is the real Australia. I believe this welcome wall is a summary of Australia. And I believe the stories and values from the people on this welcome wall are the history pages and anecdotes of Australia. Thank you for this opportunity and I'm proud that my family shares a special place with your family. Thank you George for sharing your story and your thoughts with us and perhaps if we could all thank the speakers that we've had today. I would like now to ask Alicia forward to come back and we'll all be upstanding please and we'll sing the national anthem.
And thank you, Alicia, for your fine singing and particularly for the singing of the national anthem. In a moment, I will uh, accompany the speakers for the unveiling of the new names on the wall, which is just up there under the uh, blue covers. Uh, before I do so, can I point out that there is an information booth out there on the left, which can answer all or any questions you may have about the Welcome Wall and the many exhibitions or programs that we have on today. Could I, and I would like to, thank the staff who have come together today from the National Maritime Museum to make this a successful event. We also had a large uh, group of volunteers who have assisted this morning, so if we could make a special thank you for them.